Hey, welcome back, and we are back in doing our Bible study with Revelation. I hope you're enjoying going through the study with me. I'm kind of just sharing my devotions with you as I go through and talk about what I learned as I read through this book, and I hope that you're finding that Revelation isn't as hard as you thought it would be, and that you're enjoying these short little uh, videos about the book of Revelation. So we're jumping into chapter 14. Chapter 14 can be really, really, really confusing. I'm not going to lie to you, but I want you to think about it this way. Um, have you ever uh, watched a movie and you get to a part in the movie and you think that made no sense at all? Like, I, what in the world just happened? But then at the end of the movie, you realize, oh, now I get what was happening there. That's kind of what chapter 14 is about. Um, it doesn't, it's kind of confusing as you're reading along and you get to chapter 14, but then when you finish the whole book of Revelation and you go back, then Revelation 14 makes more sense. So it's kind of just giving you an idea of things that are going to happen um, closer to the end or in the last half of the book of Revelation. So when we jump in, we start off with um, the Lamb and the 144,000. And they are on, um, they're standing on Mount Zion, and there is a group that is singing. So there are some different people who have different views about this. Um, so some people believe that the 144,000 have died. So if you can remember, uh, if we go back, chapter 7, that there was a seal put on 144,000 so that nothing happened to them. So when all of the judgments were happening, they were safe. So some people believe that at the three and a half point, um, the seal like, that uh, the Antichrist is going to be able to kill them. So he's going to kill all of them. And they kind of get this because they talk about it being the first fruits. So some people will believe that they were the first ones um, to face martyrdom when um, Antichrist begins killing everybody. So some people believe that. And then some people believe that we are actually getting just a glimpse. It's kind of like if you just take a quick peek at the last chapter of a book or the last, you know, sometimes you're reading a book and you're like, I'm just going to read the last paragraph real quick and then come back. That it's kind of like that. So we're just getting a quick glimpse of them being with God or being with Jesus on Mount Zion, um, which we're going to learn about more at the end of Revelation. But they're standing there on the mountain and they are together with him and they are singing. So it's kind of like uh, after reading chapter 13, and singing about the Antichrist and the false prophet. Kind of like, don't worry though, we win in the end. It's kind of a picture of that. These men are described though, they are virgins, uh, they are loyal to Christ, they have no deceit, and they have really great character, and they follow him everywhere. So these are the ones who have been preaching, um, and that's why there are people who are becoming Christians in the um, during the tribulation, because the church, I believe, is not there, that they were raptured, but they are still Christians because these are the men who have been preaching. So they also have, um, there are singing, so there's a loud voice and harps, and that this is a song that's being sung. So there's a couple of different ideas on who is singing. So some people believe that the angels are singing, and some people believe that it is people who were martyred um, for their faith who are singing. What we know is that there's a new song that's being sung that they are singing. And some people believe actually that it's 144,000 that are singing. So there's those three different versions of that. So that's what we have at the beginning. And then after that, we have the proclamation of the three angels. So the angels go out. Um, the first one preaches the gospel to every single corner of the earth. So the 144,000 have been out speaking. We had, remember, the two men who were speaking um, from past, from, we were talking about that a couple chapters ago. But then if there's any little tiny section of the earth that hasn't heard the gospel, uh, this angel will go out and he'll make sure the entire world has had a chance to know um, the gospel. The second one, I'm talking about how Babylon has fallen. So at this point, um, in the, remember we're still kind of in the prelude. So when we come out of the prelude, next chapter, um, the Babylon hasn't fallen at that point. So this isn't saying like at this point Babylon falls. We're going to learn more about Babylon um, when we get farther along. But, Bab but they're gonna, this angel is saying Babylon has fallen. So we know that is going to happen. And the third angel says, um, everyone with the mark is going to face God's wrath. So remember we talked about the mark of the beast that we talked about um, in the chapter before. So anyone who has the mark of the beast, at this point, they're sealed, their end is sealed, they cannot reverse, they cannot follow Jesus now. 
they their destiny is doomed forever. All right. So so far in the chapter, we've had the 144,000 with the lamb, and there's a song that's being sung. We've had the three angels going and giving the declaration, and then we have um, some people believe it's Jesus, some people believe it's an angel. Uh, I believe it's Jesus, but he's seen on a cloud with a crown and a sickle. So if you know what a sickle is, it's like the long stick with a knife on the end that you cut the um, wheat down with and things like that. So an angel tells Jesus the time has come to reap the harvest. And this is why some people don't believe it's Jesus, because they would say, well, Jesus wouldn't take a message from or a command from an angel. But is the angel giving the command or is the angel just saying that the time has come? And so um, then there is this, uh, another angel that gathers the clusters of the vines of the earth. So what we're seeing here with this is what's going to happen at the very, very end of the tribulation when Jesus comes. And they talk here about there being a lot of blood and it's up to the, um, up to the saddle of the horse and all that kind of stuff. We're going to get into that later on and I'm going to kind of delve into... Um, whether that's literal or not literal a little bit later, but just for now just picture lots of blood So we will talk more about that later, but what's happening here is we're seeing at the end what's going to happen When there's a harvest so this chapter can be confusing, but just kind of think about it this way um, We have the we have Jesus and the hundred forty four thousand kind of giving a picture of at the end Don't worry. We all win so if you're freaking out at this point in the book, it's okay, because we're going to win in the end. And then you have the angels giving the declaration, the three important declarations, which they're preaching the gospel, so everyone has a chance to know. They are telling them that Babylon has fallen, and also that if you've taken the mark of the beast, then that's it. There's no chance for you. And then we have um, Jesus or the angels with the sickle that are harvesting. That is what's going to happen at the very, very end um, when there's going to be a great battle. Okay, so this can be a confusing chapter, and that's okay. If you read through it and you're confused, that's okay. Um, but it's not that long, but go ahead and read it, and just know that you will understand chapter 14 later, once you get into some of the other chapters. But this is the end of the prelude, so when we get into tomorrow's Bible lesson, um, we're going to be jumping into chapter 15, and then we're going to be continuing on from where we left off. All right, I'm Loralee Siemens. This is Bible study. You just did Revelation chapter 14. It's a little confusing, but it's okay. Go ahead and read it. Don't be afraid.